What's the weirdest thing you've seen happen at a friend's house that they thought was normal? Story 1. Here's an I was that family story. My godmother, who was practically an aunt, ran a fairly successful daycare out of her home in the 90s. She was a first-generation immigrant to the U.S. whose parents came to the New England area from Ireland. My two younger brothers and I spent a lot of time at her home, and I was generally the oldest child there. When I was about eight years old, she started to have me make her her favorite drink, gin and tonic. She drank these all day while running her home daycare. At age eight, I knew how to mix cocktails, that forks were better for stirring than spoons, and that large plastic bottles of gin were cheap and low quality. This went on for years on pretty much a daily basis until my family moved out west. My godmother kept her daycare running until she passed away. I'm sure of health problems relating to alcohol. I was 15 when she passed and I'm in my 30s now. I honestly went most of my life thinking nothing of it until I became a father a couple of years ago. At which point I was like, how the fudge did anyone let her have a daycare? Side note, I drink but would consider myself an average drinker if not below average. With that being said, I could never stomach the thought of gin and didn't try gin until I was 30. This was because I once licked my finger early in my daycare bartending career after a couple of drops of gin splashed on my hand as I was pouring. That plastic half-gallon quality gin was the worst thing I'd ever had in my life and I had no idea how my godmother liked it so much. Complete ruined my taste for gin at 8. Story 2. More of a date story. Was on a date with a guy who was cooking dinner for me and his dog took a giant horse pour out the water in the living room. I jumped up, a bit panicked, trying to get the guy's attention to what just happened. The guy didn't even look up when he said, oh yeah, she does that sometimes, and that was it. I asked him if there was a towel and disinfectant I could use to help clean it up, and the guy says, I'll just throw some Febreze on it after dinner. I suddenly realized the musty smell I noticed earlier wasn't from his cool and rustic cabin being under a canopy of trees, or that the floor in the same location that bowed when you stepped over it was because it was old. Ate dinner at a table that was a couple feet away from the dog toilet. Left, flipping gross. Story 3. Went with a few friends to one of their family's houses for a birthday party when I was like 15 or 16. We smoked candy, swam, and had a great old time. After eating, we settled in to watch a horror movie. And at some point, I looked around me, and everyone in that family was sitting in the same crisscross applesauce position and slowly rocking back and forth while watching TV. Definitely not the weirdest thing on this thread by far, but something about it was extremely creepy. They were nice as hell, though. Story 4. 15 years ago. Visit a friend house who live in San Francisco around 3rd Street, bad neighborhood area. Upon entering pass by the kitchen, four gas stove flame was in full blast, not cooking anything, no vent. You can literally see a big burn hole in the ceiling all the way through the second floor room. His mom was upstairs one of those rooms far away from the bottom floor kitchen, watching TV in full blast. Long story short, they are basically using their gas stove as a centralized heater for the whole house. I'm a certified fire safety director at my work. This almost gives me a heart attack. Story 5. Went to a sleepover at this girl's house and her mom was obsessively taking pictures of us all night. At one point, we were watching a movie and my friend passed out and her mom, I cow you not, pulls out a huge newscast type heavy duty camera and starts recording her daughter sleeping for a solid five minutes. I have trouble sleeping. And so that night when us kids were in the bedroom to sleep, I was on the floor, just staring at the wall in the dark. I was facing away from the door, laying on my side. I hear the door creak, some footsteps, and then the darkness of the room lit with a sudden flash. I got up just in time to see the door close. I know it was her mom taking pics of us. The weirdest part to me is that it was about 3 a.m. when that happened, meaning the girl's mom either had an alarm or just stayed up that late and wait. Story 6. So when I younger my dad passed away, my mom remarried and had two kids. I was moved into the basement. Unfinished basement. I didn't think anything of it since I was 10. I had a sheet blocking my area from the laundry area. It had bare concrete walls, wood beams and piping across the ceiling and cement flooring. Used a heater and dehumidifier cause it was cold and humid. When I used the heater, my parents would make my sheeted area around my bed so it would heat up the space quicker. Parents didn't allow any of my friends over, and my brother and sister weren't allowed in my room. Distant family members also never stayed over, and when we had family gathering, I was told to go into the guest room instead of my room while they were there. I thought, cool, I have a huge room and no one can mess it up. My family would go on vacations yearly without me from when I was 12 till I was 18. I was the dog and house watcher. During one of those vacations when I was 17, I invited a friend come over. They pointed out how messed up up it was that there were bedrooms fully furnished with TVs for my brother and sister, a guest room fully furnished as well with a TV, and how I was in the basement with sheets for walls and bathroom mats on the floor. I completely dismissed it because it was normal to me. 
It wasn't until I was 20 that I found out that the family trips that I didn't go on were paid for with money that I was getting from my dad passing away. I'm sure I got some of the money and food and clothes and whatever I needed, but it's got me pretty messed up up because my brother and sister don't have any memory of it. And when I talk about it, they always back my parents by saying we were raised right and I opted out of vacations. They also thought the guest room was my room. Add on. I just wanted to thank everyone for being so kind and welcoming with your thoughts. There is a lot. And this whole day has been way more emotional than I could have ever, ever expected. I'm trying my best to get back to everyone, and if I miss you, it was an honest mistake. Again, thank you everyone, you all deserve the world. Also, if any of you need someone to talk to, my door is always open. After a ton of messages hounding me to add an Amazon wish list, here it is. I added a bunch of expensive stuff that I really do hope no one buys. Its list is stuff I'm hoping to buy myself in the future. Story 7. My family were very comfortable and my mom always babysat lots of kids from around the neighborhood. Basically, her place was just where the kids to the sky out. Once there was an emergency with my dad and my mom really needed somebody to watch me overnight, and I wound up with one of the families that she babysat for. They were really nice people, and I was close friends with their kids, obviously, because they were at my house every day. It was a new experience, though. This was the first time I'd ever seen people living in real poverty. I was kind about it, and I didn't say anything, but parts of it were a real shock to me. The toilet didn't work but they had just continued to use it to the point that it was piled up to the seat. We had to unscrew the light bulb to turn off the lights because the switch would shock you if you touched it. I felt really bad for them. It was just a real eye-opener for me as a kid, and it gave me a much better understanding of exactly why my mom babysat and fed all those kids. Story 8. I babysat for a family on occasion, and the kids would always ask for a cool cup, and I had no clue what it was. They asked for them constantly, but were too little to really describe them enough for me to understand. I mentioned it to the mom in passing one day, and she started laughing and the tops off of some bell peppers and took out the seeds and then filled the peppers with tap water. The kids went nuts over them like there were treats. It was really weird to me that drinking water out of bell peppers was a thing to beg for on the regular. Story 9. Stayed at a friend's house when I was probably 10 or 11, and we had a sleepover one night, and we were up really late playing games and just talking. Around 3-4 a.m. his dad comes in, frantic saying that he heard someone breaking in upstairs and that we needed to leave immediately. Anyways, we walk out of the house and he tells the neighbor that they need to leave too. The neighbor looked extremely worried and pulled her phone out. We drive to a place and he gets us some food and eventually an ambulance comes. And so does the neighbor along with it. Because apparently the father was schizophrenic and having an episode. There was really no break in. Obviously my friend now knows this, but back then we genuinely believed him. Story 10. Growing up in rural East England, had a friend who lived on a working farm. They had the stereotypical big English farmhouse. Lovely old place, no flat floors or straight walls anywhere. Anyway, downstairs was an interesting layout. They had a room that was almost hidden away that you could easily miss unless you knew it was there or noticed it from outside. So, this room, I only ever went in once, maybe twice in many years of being friends and going over their house quite a lot. It was their Christmas room. It has decorations up all year round, and during the year when they bought presents, they'd wrap them and just put in the room and leave them there until Christmas. It was awesome in a sense, though. A whole room for this is great. Often when it came to Christmas time, they'd forgotten what something was that they got for another family member. Edit. Reading the rest of the thread, this is so tame and boring compared to the dog flipping mother or the cake and soup one. Edit 2. Thank you to everyone for the upvotes. Nice to see it still getting read. Thinking back about it, and without wanting to sound like I'm tooting my own horn with all the absolutely heartbreaking posts in here, I guess I posted this as almost a break from them. God bless everyone and peace to all three. Story 11. When I was younger, I was best friends with two brothers from Jamaica. One of the days they asked me to stay over so we could play some Atari after we finished playing outside. We came home 12 minutes after their curfew, so their dad, who was extremely calm, told us to sit in the living room. I sat in there with my two friends, and they were super quiet, which was a bit weird until their dad walked in with a belt and beat the living cow out of them. I cow myself, not literally, because I thought I was in for a beating, but he didn't hit me, which was a huge relief. After the beating, he, their dad, asked if I would like some carrot juice, while my friends just went back to normal and set up their Atari like nothing happened. I was sat on the sofa wondering what the fudge just went on. Story 12. Slept over at a friend's when I was around 10. She was the only girl in her family and had five brothers, whose ages ranged from like 4 to 15. Everything about my friend's room sleeping situation was normal, but her brother's room was bizarre. They shared one big room with three bunk beds, each mattress, a fitted sheet, a pillow, and nothing else. No top sheets, no blankets, no comforters. 
Also, the boys didn't have pajamas. They all just slept in the clothes they had worn that day, with their shirts tucked into their pants and belts on, too. Their room didn't have a door, and neither did their connected bathroom or their closets. Turns out they were fundamentalist Christians, and the boys' setup was meant to prevent. Story 13. I'll be the weird family. My dad is a doctor, and one day my friend came over who had a totally blackened toenail from getting stepped on by a baseball cleat. No problem, my dad says. Just some blood underneath the toenail. We can relieve the pain by puncturing a hole in the toenail and letting the blood flow out. Well, he proceeds to get out a Dremel, tiny drill, sterilize a new drill bit, and drills a small hole in my friend's toenail. Blood shoots out of the hole into the air. My friend and I were screaming and laughing the entire time. It worked. He was instantly relieved of his pain. My friend asked if this was a normal occurrence in the house. I told him that my dad has always been the go-to for caring for friends, neighbors, etc. But this did indeed take the cake for being the best procedure he's done in the house. Story 14. One of the first times I met my husband's family, I was over at their house, and husband gestured for me to sit down and be comfortable. Their house was really very cluttered. Not quite hoarder cluttered, but close. They had a couple of couches facing each other, and then some other chairs. Not knowing the rules, I sat on one of the couches which had a lot of stuffed teddy bears on it. OMG, you would think I had sat down on live bears. There were probably 20, 30 small, medium stuffed bears on this couch. Husband's mother and twin brother both visibly reacted as if I had damaged the bears. Not antique bears either. That was when I was told that the couch was for the bears, and only for the bears, and that no one was allowed to sit on the bears' couch. Just the bears. The bears all had little beaded necklaces with their names on them to tell them apart because they were all the same brand and style. Story 15. When I was seven, I went over to play with a new friend and she asked if I wanted a snack. I said sure, and we went into their playroom where there was a mini fridge just stacked with candy, full bars of everything, and she casually tossed me a pack of Rolos. Now the house was a manufactured home, not a trailer purse, but definitely not like the usual house either. I know this doesn't indicate how much money the family had, but this was not in an upscale neighborhood or house. I marveled at A, the largest amount of candy I have still to this day ever seen, and B, the fact that she and her siblings all just had free access to it at such young ages. She was surprised at my surprise and asked what did I keep in my snack fridge. I told her I didn't have one of those, and then it was her turn to be absolutely gobsmacked at the idea that I didn't have a mini fridge full of candy just at my disposal and whim. Story 16. Not at my friend's house, but we were 15-year-olds and went for a walk to her mom's friend's house to get her some smokes. We walked into the house and the two-year-old was covering themselves in margarine. The floor was covered in roaches, animal poop, used nappies, diapers, and rubbish. There was peanut butter on the walls and kitchen table. It was so incredibly sad to see dirty and disheveled kids living in that. The weirdest part was seeing the toddler smearing margarine in their hair and no one caring. The rest was disgusting, but I'd seen that kind of living before. Never the complete indifference towards a baby, though. Awful. Story 17. Was sleeping over at a friend's house in sixth grade. 3 p.m. we show up to her house after school. We walked into her apartment to find her mom half-dressed, passed out drunk and sprawled out with her head on the floor. One arm twisted weirdly so it somehow was resting on the coffee table and her legs on the couch. TV was on and blaring, didn't even notice our arrival. I had zero experience with this kind of thing and although I could tell my friend was embarrassed, I didn't understand the full implications or really what was happening. I pretty much just thought it was an odd place for a nap which is how I explained it to my parents later when I commented on how odd it was to be napping there instead of in bed. I might have even asked them if they would let me sleep on the couch and watch TV too. Bless my parents for immediately understanding the situation, but not making a scene and not spoiling my naivete or ever embarrassing my friend in any way. My family is pretty good at being subtle, for better or worse. However, that was absolutely the last time I stayed at her house. All sleepovers with that particular friend were at my house from then on, but it was a casual coincidence for my POV. I didn't even notice that subtle change for a couple years. Looking back, I think my friend really appreciated it though. We're still friends and she has kids of her own and she's doing great, is a doctor. But her mom still has the same alcohol struggles and is very in your face about it even now as she was then. Story 18. Went to friend's house as a kid. Sitting at the dinning table for lunch. House phone rings. Everyone falls to the floor around me including the mom and dad. I'm the only one left sitting there. The dad informs me that I now must answer the phone. Hello? Johnson's house. I hold the phone out to the dad. Um, it's for you. Everyone laughs. I am so uncomfortable. The next time that phone rang, I was the fastest to the floor, I can tell you that. Such a fun, loving family. Loved going around there. Story 19. Back in high school, I had a friend whose mom seemed super chill. Would let us come over to breathe, drink, and hang out. At one point, though, 
Cal got super weird when one of the other guys in our friend group started banging the friend's mom. The guy who was having close relationship with our friend's mom ended up getting super aggro and like bossing the kid around because he was screwing his mom. It was definitely messed up up and no one did anything about it. The other friends in the group would rag on the mom's son about it, but like left it at that. Story 20, went to this girl's house in primary school. I'm ashamed to say it was because I felt bad that she was getting bullied at school. And in hindsight, she had a learning disability. She was nice though, just sometimes said really uncomfortable things for an 11 year old. Anyway, she had a three-year-old brother, and I saw her mom reading a book titled How to Be a Good Mom or something similar. She started screaming at this toddler for not vacuuming his room and referencing the book. I was like, ma'am, you expect this infant to vacuum his room? To be fair, he did end up doing it, but mind blown. Their family had a really weird dynamic. Story 21. In high school, I would stay at my friend's house a lot and play video games and sleep over. My friend's mom would encourage his little sister and her friends to put on skimpy outfits and try to seduce me and his other friends, take their tops off in the hot tub and things like that. His mom would stand at her bedroom window and watch her daughter try to bang all his friends. I didn't get it at the time, but I secretly think his mom was the one who wanted to bang all of us, so she told her daughter to instead. His mom would also drink a bottle of wine and touch us inappropriately, touch our stomachs or slap our butts, and say things like, oh, have you been working out? And my friend would just say like, it out, mom, you're embarrassing me. The whole family was weirdly close relationship, and I learned later they had some dark secrets. Story 22. I celebrated Christmas with my HS girlfriend's family one year. It was her mother's turn to open her presents, and she opened one from her daughter, then one from her other daughter, then finally one from her husband. Then, her husband started pulling tiny hidden gifts for his wife from everywhere. Earrings from the couch cushions, necklaces, bracelets, a bag of candy, and flowers. He had at least a dozen presents hidden everywhere from behind the curtains, in a lampshade, behind the TV, in a closet. They just kept coming and he had the biggest grin on his face. When he was done, he wished her a Merry Christmas, told her he loved her, and kissed her right on the mouth in front of me. It was wonderful, but extremely weird to me. It wasn't until that display of love and joy for his wife that I realized I had never once seen my own parents act the least bit affectionate towards each other, that I had never heard them say I love you to each other. That's when I realized it was my family that was weird. It wasn't until that display of love for his wife that I realized that it was manly to be romantic and to show love and affection. Her parents were wonderful people, and I will always regard them as role models. I hope they're doing well all these years later. Story 23. His parents walked around Butt Peach. Another friend and I went over to play the new Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green all night and eventually decided it was a sleepover, all-nighter kind of vibe. We wake up to his folks poking their heads in in the morning to let us know they were making breakfast and it'll be ready in a minute. We're stoked and walk our way into the kitchen and they're serving up some extra eggs and sausage like I had never seen an adult before and our friend was totally unfazed by it. Just ate and talked like it was the most normal cow ever. Super awkward and we dipped out ASAP. Story 24. Went to my friend's house after a high school exam. Walked in and his dad and stepdad were playing sorry while smoking and his mom was making out with some random dude on the couch. She gave us $20 and told us to go get a couple large pizzas and come back. I don't know what was weirder that my friend was like, it's not even my dad's week with me. All incredulous. Or when we got back that his dad and makeout dude was gone, table all set for pizza, and his stepdad and mom acted like it was just a normal Wednesday. Story 25. I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, and my mom pushed me to be friends with people within the religion. One girl was only allowed to talk to people within the religion, so she was homeschooled. She was was allowed to watch one movie or one TV show, a day rated GPG with approval. Three of us, aged 16, watched Lion King 2, then her parents made us go to bed at 730 in the summer. She also wasn't allowed to have any posters on her wall as that was viewed as idol worship. Her parents came in to approve our prayers for the night. I left feeling super bad for her. Story 26. Friend's amputee grandpa demanded to watch everyone in the bathroom when they went. He had a mirror so he could watch you. When I didn't fall for that, they put shampoo in my hair so I'd have to take a shower. Nope the F out and called my mom. Friend didn't think it was odd. Edit. Low all three wholesome awards? Thanks. Edit. I think my FAQ edit didn't save. 1. Did I tell my mom? No, I did not. I felt embarrassed about it. 2. Who put the shampoo in my hair? My friend did. 3. I am a woman. And here's some random information. I remember my friend's dad having to pour out the water with the door open so that grandpa could watch him do it. I also remember the grandpa poured water into a jug in front of everyone. I also remember crying and saying I wanted to go home and they wouldn't let me call my mom. So I kept crying until they finally gave in. Story 27. This happened when I was like 6. 
I needed to use the bathroom at a friend's house, and he led me to his parents' bathroom. The place was filled with nonsense of all sorts. Boxes, magazines, an inflatable pool, lots of other stuff. You could barely get in there. He pulled out a drawer from the installed cabinet by the entryway and said to pee in there. I thought he was joking until he went ahead and peed in there himself. I couldn't argue with that, so I too peed right in there. Then he shut the drawer and we went and played more Ninja Turtles. I have no idea what became of that drawer slash house slash family. Story 28. I didn't see this happen, thank flipping God, but here's the story. I had recently moved to a new town before my freshman year, Little Cowhole in KS, and made a few good acquaintances, but was still learning who's interesting and who isn't, etc. This one kid, I honestly don't remember his name, seemed cool. He was into video games and stuff. We hit it off. Ended up hanging out at school off and on, etc. So, one day he asks if I want to come over after school, and I couldn't for some reason. Probably work, I don't remember. He says to me, that's fine, I'm sure my neighbor will come over and we'll end up watching movies in any way. I laughed, thinking he was being facetious or whatever. But he doesn't laugh. He does not laugh. Looks at me and turns his head a bit. I'm serious. My dad's friend comes over and we watch movies and jerk off. I thought you might want to... I did not continue the conversation. I never spoke to him again. And I also never said a thing about it to anyone. Looking back, I wish I had... Pretty sure that dude was being and looking back and knowing what I know now... The fact that he was so matter-of-fact about it, I'd bet money he had been most of his life. Flipping terrible! Story 29. My childhood best friend lived with his grandparents. His grandfather was a clockmaker. He mostly restored them. Their large two-story house's walls were covered in old restored grandfather and cuckoo clocks. Each one had a small sticker with a number so he could keep track of them all. The highest number I saw was over 700. I would say 25% of them were wound so every hour you were treated to a symphony of clocks. I didn't appreciate it when I was a kid, but those clocks were fantastic pieces of workmanship. Story 30. Is the most horrifically filthy place you have ever seen humans live and count as weird? A pal I had known from middle school, I went to see him six years after graduation. He was living with someone and they had a kid. And all of them lived in a little two-bedroom place. I get there and then smell hit me at the door. The carpet had been some kind of shag but matted down to just stuff. The kitchen had a sheet over the doorway. I could not believe my eyes. All the surfaces in the place were just caked with dishes, glasses, boxes, etc. I couldn't and didn't look too long. See, all of it was covered in thick, green, fuzzy mold. The sink had standing water covered with a blanket of mold. I was in there for all of four seconds. After I came out of there, I asked to use the restroom. Big mistake! The sink, tub, and toilet were. Sink due to hair dye, tub due to filth and slime, and the toilet was the same. The area between the tub, toilet, and sink was jammed full of what I think had been towels, but they had sat rotting and growing slime. It was just a big, smelly lump of horror. There was no way I was going to change something hopping onto my banana if I tried to pour out the water there. Their poor kid slept on a mattress on the floor in a nearly bare room with just a sheet and blanket. The hallway right outside the kid's room had a bare bulb that was being swarmed by bugs. Yes, CPS was called about the situation. Story 31. His mom walking around topless barking a chore list while we just sat around the coffee table working on homework. She was a single mom working multiple jobs. They were latchkey kids. They didn't even bat an eyelash, but the minute she saw a new face sitting on the rug boring a hole into the distant wall, she shifted on a dime, ducked into the mudroom, threw on her bra and work shirt and brought out a carton of Oreos from a secret stash and was pretty much shocked into silence. I think she was terrified I'd misappropriate it to my parents, but all we cared about was cookies. Story 32. I've got one from the opposite perspective. So to paint the picture, I invited a few people over for my 10th birthday party. The plan was a sleepover with video games and board games. Sounded great to my nerdy friends and I. Well, the day of the party comes along and one of my friends gets dropped off by the school bus with me. We walk inside and there's no pizza yet and the cake hasn't been picked up. I ask my dad and he starts screaming about how my mom will pick them up on her way from work. She won't be home until 7 p.m. at the earliest and my friends will be arriving around 4 p.m. After my friend and I left the room, my friend, from now referred to as Mark, not his name, asked me if something is a wrong and why my dad was so mad. It was normal for him to be that mad when he forgot something. The rest of my friends show up around 4 p.m. Friends Bill, Bob, and Frank, also not their names. I offer them fruit snacks when they arrive and tell them pizza should be there around 7.30 p.m. So we're taking turns on Gran Turismo 4 when Bill asks if my parents are home. He'd like to meet them. I tell him that my dad's home but he's sleeping right now as he gets up kind of early. This was a lie. He was taking his medicine, what I'd later that evening find out was candy, and would be occupied for a while. And my mom would be getting out of work around 7 p.m., which was true. The lie seemed to work, and we continued playing games. 
8 p.m. rolls around and my mom gets home. She has no pizza or cake. I greet when she comes into the living room. She asks us if we ate the pizza and cake already. I tell her that dad told us she'd be getting them. She asked where my dad was, so I told her their bedroom. She said she'd be right back and went to their bedroom. It wasn't long before you could hear them, clearly, screaming at each other. I noticed them arguing was making my friends uncomfortable, but I was unfazed. It was them that I realized that what was going on wasn't normal. I felt awful. I told my friends that my parents would likely be arguing most of the night, and if they wanted to go home, I'd understand. They all wanted to go home. Due to the layout of the home, the kitchen was closer to the bedrooms than the living room, and that was where the phone was. So I went with each of my friends to the kitchen so they could call their parents to be picked up. The front door was also closer still. They each took turns calling their parents. I had to talk to Frank's parents for him, as he was too shaken by what was going on. All the parents were there within the hour and picked up my friends. Mark was the last one to be picked up and asked if I wanted to hang out as his place for the night. I told him that if my parents found out I left without telling anyone, especially if I didn't leave a note saying where, they'd be even more angry. And I told him that I couldn't leave a note saying where I was going, as I didn't want to have his parents dragged into it. We hugged and he left. My parents finished screaming at each other around 11 p.m. when my dad left screaming about going to his buddy's place for the weekend. I was reading a book in the living room when my mom walked in and saw that everything was put away and all my friends were gone. She asked me where they went. I'll never forget the pain in her eyes when I said they each called their parents and went home already. For what I thought was normal, I thought everyone's parents argue endlessly. I thought everyone had a parent that they lied for. I thought everyone's parents lies to them constantly. I thought everyone's parents got angry at them without prompting. I thought everyone always looked for exits upon entering a new place. I thought everyone knew how to act without being seen. I thought everyone knew how to act under pressure. I haven't celebrated a birthday since, or even tried. I feel no drive to celebrate it as all it does is remind me of that and many other horrible things around that time. I'm still friends with Mark all these years later. He's my one of my only friends and he's by far my closest friend. Story 33. My friend's parents lived with the grandparents and the grandpa apparently had had a stroke years ago. Anyway, they kept him in a recliner in the front room with a steady stream of prohibited photos playing on loop. I'd gone over for a sleepover, not knowing this, or without knowing that the only place for me to sleep was in the living room, and apparently Grandpa did not sleep in a bed or anything. He stayed in that recliner all night. Grandma would come out of her room periodically to change tapes. He'd grunt really loud when one was over. All the kids acted like this was perfectly normal. The adults made jokes about wishing they could be so lucky. I was like eight or nine. They didn't have a phone, so I couldn't exactly call home to be rescued, and I never went to a sleepover again. Story 34 their dad swimming in their pool when they had friends over. He would often do it when girls were over. Edit. The guy was deranged and his kids hate him. The story gets stranger. My friend's mom and him are divorced yet still live in the same house, even though they have been separated for almost eight years and sometimes her boyfriend comes over. I've heard stories from my friends that they've heard them have close relationship upstairs while they're in the kitchen with their dad. I can't make this cow up. Story 35. I was maybe 12 and visiting a friend who lived deep in the woods for the first time. They had two outdoor dogs, and one got free and ran over and attacked the other. The dog that got bit was quite a bit smaller and was definitely injured. My friend's dad came out with a pistol and both dogs. It changed my life forever. I was raised in a house where dogs are family. My friend and his family didn't seem phased at all. Edit. This really took off, so I guess I can elaborate a little more. This happened around 1994. I grew up in an extremely rural town, so when I say my friend lived deep in the woods, I'm talking like they were completely off the grid backwoods. One of the dogs was my friend's and the other was his sister's. They were chained up outside 24 sevenths and just not treated as pets at all. I believe the logic behind the shooting was that the sister's dog was too injured to recover and my friend's dog had terminated his sister's dog. So it was only fair to them both. About 30 minutes after the whole thing happened, we all ate dinner together like nothing happened. My parents picked me up shortly after and I cried the entire way home. We only to the sky out at my house after that. Story 36. I'll be the weird family, although this doesn't quite fit the normal since no one thought it was normal. I was about 12 or 13 and I had a huge zit on my peach that was incredibly painful and it was deep under the skin. I couldn't pop it no matter what and in my extreme pain sitting down I asked my dad to pop it. He said all right and I took down my pants and bent over. My dad then put on gloves to pop the zit. Anyway, in the middle of all this my sister's friend, girl, at 10 or 11 walks in on us at full speed as we were behind a wall that connects the hall sector to the living room so she was real close. She gasps and walks out of the room. Yeah, there we go. Yes, the bad person popped. One of those water-containing zits that cause a lot of pain. 
edit. In Croatia, we don't make a big deal of out accidents like this, nor is something like this inherently abnormal. It was the lack of context and the swiftness of it that got her, and she just bolted out. Edit. Holy cow, did I not expect this to have 8K flipping up votes when I woke up. Some people are confused. The dad helping is not the weird part. The weird part is a little girl coming over to a friend's house and finding a grown man dad, both hands on a bent over son's peach up close. Our living room is on level two thirds of our house, and you can hear people coming from the stairs up into the hallway, except this time the door was closed and it was a slightly chubby little girl, so we didn't hear her until she burst into the room. I was about 11 or 12 and my sister was nine. I had zits on my peach and asked my sister if it was visible since we were off at a really old mortar house in the hills where my grandma lived at the time. Mortar build, old windows, air was stale AF, and we were sweating like pigs in a summer night in old bed sheets that did not let air pass. The house is on a hill before a mountain covered in trees that block fresh air at night. She said she'll take a picture with the phone so I can see. Anyway, six months later while my friend is scrolling my phone to find a picture I took of him, he finds the peach zit picture, S. The reaction was a weird look, lol. Also, my other grandma told us once she used to eat chicken cow as a kid, as well as pieces of walls along with other kids. I never had to examine what I just heard so much at that time. Don't think I processed that well. Ain't the half of what I've seen there. Like dead worms in my food. Story 37. My friend invited me to sleep over, and the next morning we were eating and talking with her mom. Her mom asks if she wants to prank dad again, and my friend's all, yes! He was so mad. I thought they had maybe swapped shampoo with Nair or something, so I regrettably asked what they did last time. It turned out they had tied string around his banana while he was passed out from pain meds and woke him up by tying the string to the bedroom doorknob and then slamming the door. My friend was a nine-year-old girl and her mom got her in on that. Doing it at all was FD up, but you were going to put your kid in the mix? They assured me they messed with him like that all the time. It was fine. Took a hard pass on staying over again because I did not want to know what they tied a string to for sleeping females or what other cow I might walk in on. Edit. Someone asked if I was still friends with this person. It's been 31 years, and I'm glad to say I haven't had her crazy family in my life for 30 of those. I had a pretty dysfunctional home, but it was nothing like that. Story 38. My friend's dad convinced the kids that the butt of each loaf of bread was the best. He also outlawed hitting, but placing your hand on your sibling's shoulders and punching your own hand was acceptable. It was Noel's turn to get the end piece on the next loaf of bread, but he and I were playing when groceries came in. When Tony took the end piece, Noel went ballistic, but by ballistic, he placed his hand on his brother and was punching it. The father also collected pipe organs. He had several electric and electronic consoles. One time I took a trip across the country, disassemble a full pipe organ, and pack it home. They bought a geodesic dome and rebuilt the organ inside it. You entered in pipes. There were pipes on the walls. Great chests for the living room floor. The living room was a console, and they literally lived inside a musical instrument. Story 39. When I was 15, I was doing this nature program over the summer. I made friends with one of the girls there. We hit it off really well. When we found out that we lived near each other, she invited me over for a sleepover. Her family was cool and I didn't have any issues until later on. I had to use the bathroom and asked where it was. The mom told me that they were having a little problem with the toilet. I didn't think anything of it until I went and saw the toilet. The toilet did not work at all! They just had a plastic bag in it. There was so much poop, pee, and even used pads in it. It was just there for everyone to see. I almost started gagging. I don't know how long they kept the bag there, but it smelled awful. Everyone there acted like it was a casual thing. Till this day, I never found out if it ever got fixed. Story 40. I had a friend that lived on third floor apartment, and he would take his dog out by hoisting over the balcony on a leash, lowering it, and then hoisting it back up. It had a custom-made body harness, and it loved every bit of it. Sometimes he would give him a good swing and the dog would spread its legs out like Superman. And yes, the dog would stand by the balcony door when he was ready to go out. Same guy had a pet robin. When it was a baby, he found it injured, nursed it back to health, eventually letting it go back to the woods behind his apartment. For months, the bird would come back to balcony. With a distinct whistle, he would summon the bird for mealworms. It was his go to move with dates. Story 41. Everything was always relatively normal at this one friend's house until evening, at which point his mom, mid-40s at the time, we were nine, ten years old would always change into an extremely short, nearly transparent lace negligee with nothing on underneath it. She acted like nothing was out of the ordinary, did chores, watched TV, cooked, etc., all while we tried not to stare. At one point, we were sitting at the kitchen table trading Yu-Gi-Oh cards and she was baking cookies. When they were done, she bent over to get them from the oven and due to the extremely short negligee, we saw her whole peach and cat. My friend was completely unfazed. I was flipping speechless. 
It's also why I'm into MILFs as an adult. Story 42. I once visited a friend's house after school on a Friday with the intention of spending the night. Now I'd only ever to the sky out with her at school or at another friend's house. I arrive at her house to realize it's a total dump. Like literally, I have never seen such a messy house. Then I saw her room. Her door was literally torn off the hinges and thrown into one of the many piles on her floor. We stayed friends, but in my mind, I'm like, like hell, I'm sleeping here. And ending up going a neighborhood over to sleep at another friend's house. Story 43. I was meeting my boyfriend's parents for the very first time. He had told me they didn't get along, but everything seemed okay enough until the morning of the second day. We were all getting ready to go out somewhere outdoorsy in winter, and his dad was already ready and waiting, fully dressed in the foyer. I remember the pom-pom on the top of his toque. I was on the steps with my boyfriend and his mom, and she was speaking to me warmly about something or other. Then the dad said something about leaving soon. A very mild comment. I didn't even really hear it. Suddenly, the mom, who had been speaking to me in a normal tone of voice, turns to her husband and shrieks at him at the top of her lungs. I don't even remember what she said, but he'd made her suddenly murderously angry just by mentioning that we should probably leave soon. Dude's pom-pom shakes a little, but he says nothing in response to her, zero, and she turns back to me and rolls her eyes, trying to get me to side with her over what a flipping unpleasant person her husband clearly is. I kind of smiled nervously. Here's the thing. Everyone went back to normal, as if mom hadn't just suddenly gone off like a grenade. That man's life must have been pure hell. Story 44. I had a friend whose parents really were not that interested in taking care of him. He lived with his dad and he pretty much had the rule of the house. We were about six and we ate whatever we wanted. We went outside and played in the street late at night. He even went and woke up his dad and asked him to make us bacon. It was like 1 a.m. and when his dad said no, he threw a fit until his dad just bent over so he could go back to sleep. One time he even rode his bike to my house and we live miles away. Not to mention he had to cross a highway on his bike. We didn't even have item. He just said he wanted to come and his dad said whatever. Story 45. There were a couple of nerdy twins in my sixth grade class named Steve and Lee. They dressed poorly and their hygiene was awful. All of my friends picked on them so ruthlessly. But I wasn't brought up that way and I treated them kindly. Lee one day said that he wanted to invite me over to hang out and I couldn't say no. Their house was right on my paper route so one day I stopped by. Their parents were so weird and creepy. Both were lawyers, yet their house was stale and dank. Whilst in Jim and Lee's bedroom, they pulled out a couple of Playboy magazines. Jim told me that their dad bought them subscription. I know, even as a 12-year-old, that this was whack, but I also secretly thought it was pretty cool. Lee then told me that their dad made them go into the bathroom with them and complacency every day. Jim quickly got upset and told Lee that he wasn't supposed to tell people that. I was really creeped out and left pretty quickly. I had to interact with their dad a few times in the ensuing year since their house was on my route and I had to collect money every month. He never left a tip. Story 46. I watched my then friend's dog pass away of a brain tumor during her birthday party. Literally. The dog reeked like it was already dead, could hardly stand up, and when it could, it just kept going in circles aimlessly. Family refused to euthanize her for no discernible reason. They were well off and had a decent chunk of land, so it's not like they couldn't afford it, and it wasn't like it wasn't clear their pet was suffering. It was a sleepover party, and the afternoon after the party, the dog had passed away. And hash X200B, they acted like it was the most average thing, just going about the party like their dog wasn't occasionally convulsing in front of them. No panic, no attempt to calm the dog, just acted like it was a normal thing. Story 47. Scene. Small southern town. When I was probably like 10, 12-ish, a friend had a big sleepover for our friend group. Probably 12, 15 dudes. We were mostly jock preppy kind of kids. Future frat boy types. Upper middle class with some rich kids sprinkled in. Host kid is a recent marriage stepson of a chiropractor. His mom was a trashy MILF before we knew that word in the early 90s. Anyway, we start to arrive and we're around their place and making plans for mischief for the night. Host assures us that we can do whatever we want because his mom and stepdad are going out on a nighttime bicycle ride all night. Nope, that's not what was going down at all. The parents came out in full-blown BDSM slave gear. Leather daddy zippers and cow. Stepdad didn't have the head part fully zipped up, but mom was being led by a leash. Right in front of us. He said a few kind words instructing us to behave for the night and then led mom to the car and drove off. After a moment of stunned silence, we then had a big group argument about WTF we just saw. Host, who thought this was perfectly normal, assured us that it was just a biking thing. We didn't know everything, but we knew enough to call nonsense on that. But a half hour later, it was behind us and we proceeded with normal tween boy stuff playing Night Wars outside in the woods yard. Edit. For those asking, Night Wars is probably a weird term, but it's what we used. Basically, it was a catch-all term for tween boys running around the neighborhood unsupervised all night. 
Usually the boys would separate into groups of various sizes or sometimes just divide in half. We would play games or pranks or just go exploring in the woods. Water balloon fights, toilet papering houses, yards, egging mailboxes, paintball fights. I could probably think of more. A night wars night would be declared in advance and then we would work out the details, or not, later. This was the late 80s, early 90s in a small town with basically zero crime. If that helps clarify why a bunch of kids would be allowed to roam around all night like that. Story 48. I had a friend in school whose parents had a very eclectic decorating design around the house. They'd been all over the world on trips, so they had collected lots of unique, really cool pieces. Part of the collection included weapons from different cultures. Well, being two 13-year-old boys, we decided it would be fun to have a sword fight with some curved scimitars. Of course, we were too loud, and eventually his dad came in and caught us. Rather than get mad and yell that we had notched up the blades, instead he grabbed a long sword off the wall and started swinging at us like he was literally going to duel to the death. We spent the next 30 minutes running around the house and deflecting blows from a grown peach man with a sword. Story 49. This crazy batty lady who was our neighbor when I was a kid. We lived in a small town that still had party lines even in the early 90s, and fortunately, per s, for us, we were on her party line. She was rude and nasty and always hogged up the phone. Anytime she'd be on the phone, which was off, and you tried to pick up the phone, she'd yell at you to get off the phone. Yet if you were on the phone and she wanted it, she'd barge in on your conversation and yell at you to get off so she could use it. Why we tolerated it, I never understood. Her son was in my class at school. She also was crazy religious and didn't believe children should have any toys. They could only play outside, never inside. So of course that meant he'd always come over to our house to play. Of course we didn't tell on him. His mom was rude, not just on the phone, but even just going into her house, you could tell she was a very rude and miserable person. I cannot ever recall a single pleasant word she ever said to anyone. No one liked her at all. Story 50. I remember going over to a neighbor's apartment once and finding out what a true hoarder's home looks like. Just piles and piles of junk, furniture, trash, filth everywhere. There were apparently two gerbils I vaguely recall coming over to see, but they would frequently get out of their cage and wander lost amongst the mountain of stuff. The two brothers that lived there just shrugged it off, would brush off as much cow off the couch as possible so I could sit on something that resembled the couch's upholstery. Didn't really want to play Nintendo anymore after the initial shock of how hoarders live. Story 51. When I was a kid, I went with another friend of mine to go visit another friend's house down the street. He had a chihuahua, and it had pooped in the living room. It was there for a while. Both the parents were in the kitchen just making conversation, and my friend is like, hey, check this out, and gets a tortilla chip, dips it into the poop, and feeds it to the chihuahua. They left the neighborhood soon after, because the subprime mortgage crisis happened, and I don't doubt that they had a less than subprime mortgage. Story 52. I spent a summer in Sweden once visiting a friend, and one weekend we stayed at his sister's house. She and her fiancé lived pretty deep in the woods. And when I first walked in, I noticed that they had a small stack of round, empty butter containers in each room. And when I asked, oh, those are for the snakes, turns out they had two unpleasant person cats who would bring in live snakes from outside and just drop them randomly in the house. The snakes were pretty small and non-venomous, and were mostly just desperate to get the hell back outside. During the day, if you saw a snake, you would just pick it up and put it outside. But at night, it was easier just to drop a butter container over it and deal with it in the morning. Story 53. I was sleeping over at a friend's house. Her whole house was a mess, and it smelled like the concentrated essence of ashtray. We went upstairs to make the bed, and there was this sort of storage room with a mattress with brown stains on it. She said that I'd be sleeping on that. I thought she was joking, but she wasn't. Also, she didn't give me any sheets or a pillow, and there were mouse feces on the ground. I was so flabbergasted that I did not do or say anything, but if that were to happen to me now, I'd just go home. Also, one time this same girl was complaining to me that her parents don't clean their kitchen very well, and that her dad took the blender cup from the blender, and there was a lot of nasty stuff underneath it. Sometime later, she invited me over for dinner, and I said I wasn't interested. She wanted to know the reason, so I told her that what she had told me put me off. She was very pissed at me, but I was like, you were complaining about this, though? So you agree with me?